number one, clarifying that the one-year provision was within one year, uh, that it shouldn't extend longer than a year, which I think is a reasonable test to put on us as the planning board. There were a couple of instances where I thought we could make it clearer that the planning boards um, were, should be acting severally. And um, I'm happy to call out all the changes uh, one at a time if you like. Are you, are you able to see it? Because we've worked on it. Uh, not yet. Do you have a quick markup? Do you have a quick markup, Larry, of your copy? Oh, there. <laughs> Can you do it on your, on your hard copy? Is it how complicated? I, I am writing. I, okay. That's exactly okay. what I'm doing. Okay. So, um, if you give me some time, I'll handwrite it out. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> I, I guess I have a question. I don't know if other people do with that, that provision that uh, the litigation has pointed out, uh, and that relates to the section 190-28. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are we going to do that? I'm Is that an appropriate thing to raise? Sure. Yeah. Well, what are we referencing? Um, so let me you want to speak? Yeah, well, let me let's be a little cautious on that. Okay. First of all, Larry, you're referencing litigation. I understand that um, some people have filed new lawsuits against the town under ZBA. I have not seen them. Um, I don't really want to talk about that in public in terms of the context of that litigation. Okay. I can talk to you about on 19028 in terms of generally what the yeah, um, yeah, do that, do that. what it provides and what the ZBA did. I can read it to you. It's okay. a very really short thing. And Good. It's like other things, it's not terribly clear. <laughs> 190-28 is entitled height. A, so paragraph A states, nothing herein contained shall restrict the height of the following. Church, spire, cupola, dome, belfry, clock tower, barn, or silo. So what that means is that the height restrictions in the zoning code do not apply to those structures. That's it. B. No building or structure erected to a height in excess of the height limit for the district in which it is situated shall, one, have a lot coverage in excess of 10% of the lot area, two, be used for residence or tenancy purposes, three, have any sign, nameplate, display, or advertising device of any kind whatsoever inscribed upon or attached to such building or structure. So the question arose is, how does 19028 and this restriction, specifically the question of the lot area, the <coughs> lot area, apply to a question where you're getting a um, area variance? You know, if I'm to five or twelve, I'm turning towards the gates because this is their problem. Yeah, I'm the You're turning to the master folks. <laughs> 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 So the issue is, is how does it apply? It is my interpretation of this that this does not apply to high variances. That B applies and has to be read to A. And that it's a limit on where you're saying there you don't have a height restriction on church spires or a barn silo. You can do that. You don't have to go to the ZBA for an area variance. However, that, we'll just use the example of the silo can't be more than 10% of your plot area. You can't use it for a residency or tenancy purpose. I mean, somebody can live in it and it can't be rented out. It can't be, you know, no one's going to um, work out of it. And you can't put a sign or use a display on it. And all of that makes sense. You're basically saying, we don't want you to remember the Eiffel Tower originally had the Citroen sign on it or something. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. Um, and you don't want people living in a structure to avoid it. And you, the 10% lot coverage area. To read that as applying to every area variance for a height is nonsensical, because then you would have to need it virtually every building that gets a height variance, a commercial building, a house, is obviously used for residency or tenancy purpose. Forgetting the other question of the 10% lot area. So I don't think that is the intent of how the code was written. Nevertheless, the ZBA, when it was giving the area variance on this, 
And there is a question of whether a height variance was even necessary on this because of the um, ambiguity in how the zoning code was printed, if not adopted. Because they, when you look at the chart, there doesn't appear to be an actual height restriction for this district. Nevertheless, the ZB, ZBA said, and the applicant, Ginsburg, said, we're going to treat this as needing a height variance. We want to go through the process and do it. And they specifically said, we've looked at this height variance, and we've also applied the questions of 190-28, and we think it applies. And we, we think it's covered. We've taken that into account. So it's a long-winded answer to your question. But it's, um, and I think that's a logical. I, I, I think it is. It doesn't work to try and read 19028 to apply to every variance. Because so, I would imagine that every area of variance that's been given in the town would violate one of those three conditions. But if because probably every building that comes to getting it is used for residency or tenancy purposes. So why would this provision not be susceptible of a variance? Well, it could be if you would get it, but I don't think it applies. Again, this is an exception to having to get a area of variance. If you are putting up a church and you have a spire, as long as the rest of your church is under whatever the height restriction is for your district, you don't need to get a variance for the church spire. The farmer doesn't need to get a height variance for his barn silo that he's putting up. But that's what A said. Right, but I think so I, I think B, need, I, I think all of B B's. has to be read in conjunction with A. I don't think B is a standalone provision. I have a hard time doing that. Well, I, th th that's fine. It's a question of interpretation for the ZBA, and nobody has asked the ZBA for that interpretation. So. <coughs> If, if you read it to what I would say would be its plain meaning, which is that no structure should be more than 10% of the lot area, if it's going to exceed that height, um, who should have asked the zoning board for the review on that? Whoever thought that that, would, that applied and um, was necessary for a resolution, the applicant did not feel that that, was, that applied to them or needed a clarification. But the um, applicant thought that to go from 35 feet to 50 feet, they did. For the height variance for the structure itself, because it's not, it's not exempt as a tower or as a um, church spire, cupola, dome, belfry, etc. And why do you think the zoning board took it upon itself to say that these conditions have been met. I don't, even, I don't understand what it means that these conditions are met. I think they did that because Mr. Dow had written a letter to them, the attorney for um, the neighbors, after the close of the public hearing, raising this issue to them. And so they addressed it in the course of that discussion. And we think they, they said that this variance also satisfies these conditions and, you know, they. But these are not, con this is not something you, you do to set, none of these are conditions that are subject to satisfaction. This is not a test. No, to but me. They, they, I, their position, I believe, is that they, um, in looking at all of the criteria under an area of variance, which they looked at, they took into all, all of this into account in terms of the impacts on the neighbors, the surrounding environment. Um, alternatives that so, were available. So is your, is your thinking that what they meant to say was because the Ginsburg's uh, thing is not a church of fire, people are, this thing is not applicable? Uh, yeah, I think that was one of the, one of the interpretations of it, yes. And if you, if you look at it from a sense that I could just chime in on, on another point that we raised, is that, you know, state law sets forth, you get an, you can get an area of variance if you satisfy these criteria. What Jeff just explained is this provision basically says you can't get an area of variance for residences. 
if I'm understanding what you're explaining correctly. Well, without getting somehow a separate variance from this provision. I mean, that's so what you, took. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. This was not intended. There's no intention here, I think, by the town board to tell the ZBA, you may not give a height variance if the building's used for a residence or being leased out or if there's a sign on it. Do, do you know if we've ever given a, um, a variance, a height variance to a residence? Have we done it? Do you recall it? Oh, I would have been involved. I mean, I would assume there's thousands over the course of the years. Oh, I no, not there no, not again. Not again. Not again. Not again. <laughs> no, there haven't been, any, but I imagine well, there have been any number of height variants have, have been given for different things. I mean, I obviously haven't run residential CBA. It doesn't matter. I, we don't, whether it's a residential or commercial yeah, building. We're, 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 well, it's yeah. only residential. It's the, the area variances that we do tend to be uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I step back, step back. Yeah. 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 Right. There aren't a lot of big tall buildings in the fact that I can't think of one besides the barn or silo that traps the building. Right. Or church. Right. So Jeff, from from our standpoint as planning board, the requirements set forth in one ninety twenty eight were addressed by the zoning board in the variance. Yes. So we have so whatever variance might have been needed or whatever rule that's interpreted there has already been taken care of by zone. So any board has done that, I understand it's under litigation, it will get resolved in that litigation. And so worst, comes, be worst, to worst, worst, worst comes to worst, you know, turns out I'm wrong or the ZBA was wrong, it'll go back to the ZBA and they'll issue a variance under 19028. That's really what my question is. Yeah. We, we've got or not. I mean, we've got no or not. Yeah. Right. So the we'll issue revisit that issue. Mm -hmm. The issue, as I see it, is the ZBA did sort of a, an exquisite analysis as to what the percentage of increase is. But the percentage of increase, if it goes back, is much much higher. So it's a very different deal. I don't think the percentage of increase. Is higher if it goes back. The building size isn't changing. They looked at whether it was a substantial increase. I think it was forty-three percent or something. What the number was. Right. But, so this is a provision. If you read it the way I take it to read, and I consider it to be a very plain reading of of this statute, um, what this statute is designed to do is, um, if you're going to if, if there's a building, if you propose that building to exceed the height, you can't, in that zone, exceed 10% of the floor area, of the lot area. So, I, I think one of the questions that Aaron asked coming into tonight's meeting was, um, what would that be in Ghent? Is that right? That what, by how much would the uh, lot area be exceeded by these proposed improvements. And I'm <coughs> guessing it's way over 10%. I'm guessing it's way over 20%. Oh, I think we did, Ray did calculate the lot coverage in Ghent. That's full uh, 26% in Ghent. And that's a full day. So that means that this is that this is a waiver of like two and a half times what our code um, provides if if you take my read. And that's a much bigger deal. But we and that's just telling us we don't have to take that into account. So we don't have to take it into account. It into account through the variance process. Well the ZBA, Larry, is, is the responsibility for the town to interpret and apply the zoning code. Right, but you told us that you weren't sure that anybody asked them to review that, but then at some later point in time, they, in response perhaps to a Ken Dow letter, they did, and then they added a sentence, which makes no sense. If, if you read it the way I do. Because the sentence doesn't 
amount to the granting of a variance. If it did, it would have done the same kind of exquisite analysis that was done with respect to the percentage of the change. But I think they're saying that not granting a variance from that section, but interpreting the code in such a manner to say that doesn't apply. Um, so it doesn't apply, meaning they're waiving it? No, it's not applicable. Meaning that you, it's it's a provision of the code. Because it's and a And you apply the, the plain meaning of the code and, and that it's not applicable. It's not something they have to grant a waiver from or a variance from. It, so probably we're not going to resolve this. Right. Um, I mean, if it, what I would suggest, Larry, is if it has bearing, that has bearing on how you might vote on this application, hang on to that. Um, otherwise, I think just to argue the ZBA's intentions here isn't getting us. I think we need to get clarity on it because I read it as Larry does pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, and I'm only sorry that I, I didn't see it earlier. Yeah, and same here. I did not see this provision until just now. Okay. <coughs> right. um, so you guys don't feel comfortable voting tonight? Is that mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't I'm, feel comfortable voting affirmatively, if that's what you're saying. Okay. that yeah. you guys have no, raised. I'm, I'm ready to vote. So. And one of the things that we would like to do is... Get the vote done. Well, we would like to vote, but we, we fired a fire protection... Well, no, no, we're going to get to that. So, so hang on. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this figured out. Okay. Because if this is going to hang us up, it, it, you know, <coughs> maybe we should figure it out. I mean, I, I do okay. want to hear from Mr. Neto tonight, because he's here, and he's put a lot of work. Can I yeah. ask a question? Sure. Is this a ZBA issue or is this a planning issue? Well, that's issue? what we're not clear about. Yeah. So, so, uh, is this a ZBA issue or a planning board issue? Yeah. Yeah. There's some disagreement. Um, <laughs> so why don't we go, uh, Mr. Do you want to go ahead and talk about fire, fire suppression and fire safety? Is that, and then, yeah. 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 Let me just kind of preface this with Mark's with some of my own comments. And I, in the, the last meeting, we talked a lot about water supply mm -hmm. and about how specifically you and Mr. Chairman were not comfortable with the amount of water supply. And we kind of explained that it meets code and you kind of indicated that you didn't care and that you're still not satisfied. <laughs> we got that message loud and clear. And you indicated that, well, if you had the water tower, you know, things might be different. So as part of our resubmission. We increased the water tank not from 200, it was 250 last time. We went up to 316,000 gallons, mm -hmm. which is actually more than the volume of the uh, water power that was initially proposed. And we think in doing that, we've satisfied your concern. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to have a fire <coughs> protection engineer to take a look at everything, to not only uh, say what we already know that it needs code, but to explain why the code is what it is, why it works, um, why we can do what we've asked to do, and why it's perfectly safe and sound under engineering principles and code interpretation principles. And we wanted to highlight to the board where we actually exceed the code requirements. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to him briefly. Uh, but before I do that, um, we've had just kind of a discussion as to, because we think that there's another concern that the board has with respect to water infrastructure for firefighting purposes generally. It's really not something that we can control, not something that we can do anything about. Um, and we understand that the water tower was something that might be able to benefit other people besides the Gettysburg's project. I mean, we're taking care of our project, 
um, and we're meeting the code for our project, but we've understood that there's an issue. Okay. The water tower um, isn't happening for, me for a few reasons, one of which is it's extremely cost prohibitive in a way that just can't happen. Um, but what we may be able to offer, and Doug can speak a little bit about this, is to make our tank available to the fire department for other firefighting purposes in the general area, which will benefit not only our project, but can benefit the entire uh, area in general. And that might be something that, you know, we could move some of the board members who have been opposed on. So I'm going to turn it over to Doug and let him take things away and answer any questions you may have.